say he he in he dwell he inhabit the praises of his people hallelujah not the praises of the building the building cannot praise god amen hallelujah praise god amen so you are welcome in the name of jesus christ let us quickly read from the book of matthew matthew 15 the thing there since we are talking about returning to god amen this is something that god started to speak to me that many of believers we have been ad- adapted into the world amen if you read uh before you go to matthew let's just read with uh, romans 12:1 there romans 12 verse 2 i guess Verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2. <clears throat> Say, my heart is open. My spirit is ready to receive from you, O Lord. Give me the grace to understand your word. Give me the grace to adapt to your word and your instruction. Oh Lord my God. Thank you. In Jesus name. Amen. It says do not be conformed to this world. Hallelujah. Do not be conformed to this world. What does it mean to be conformed? It means to not be adapted to the patterns. Hallelujah. to the way the world is. Amen. Do not be conformed. Do not be adapted. Do not be drained in by the world. This is so powerful that many many Christian are wearing a tag that they are Christian but they been conformed to this world. They be conformed to the patterns of this world. Hallelujah. Their desires are of this world. Amen. All they are thinking is about this world. Hallelujah. That means they have been conformed to the standards, the way things are running in this world. We have been drained in the systems of this world. Hallelujah. Ton wapo kuyuni. Amen. And here Paul is telling us, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Hallelujah. Because it is true we are born in this world. Amen. But God does not want us to be drained in or to be adapted in their patterns in their dealing he want us to be transformed from that to become somebody else in the kingdom of god in the likeness of his son now when you are not born again you cannot be conformed into the you cannot be transformed into the image of jesus very difficult because you don't have his spirit in you but the moment you become born again you receive the spirit of god inside of you and by that spirit we supposed to go Hallelujah. And that spirit will enable or will, will, will help us to be transformed into the image of his dear son. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it is if you look around today you will notice that many many believers have been conformed. I mean, they are complaining just like the world. Hallelujah. What the world is complaining out there, the believers are also complaining. The, believe, the unbeliever have complicated their life. We too in the kingdom of God, we have complicated our lives. Hallelujah. And God is calling out his people. And he say come out among them. Be ye separated. And I will be your father. Hallelujah. Come out among them. We are called to be different children of God. Hallelujah. We are called to be totally different from the world. The way we do things should not be like the way the world is doing things. 
Because we are born of God. And as I said, in this world, we are pilgrims. Amen. We are not of this world. This is not our final resident. Hallelujah. Many people in the world, what do they say? Let us eat and drink, tomorrow we die. There is nothing any, anymore. But we, children of God, we have a hope of eternal life. We have a hope of the resurrection. We cannot live and, and, and be ignorant of this fact that one day that heaven is going to part and the Son of God will walk out of that place into the earth to come and get his very own. Hallelujah. Many people have forgotten about this fact. And remember that even though we are seeing that the coming of the Lord has not been, there are people that have died to this day. Hallelujah. Saints have died. Unbelievers have died. Hallelujah. Every day they are burying someone. You get what I'm saying? And that person, there will be a day those graves are going to be opened. Amen. Whether they died believers or they died unbelievers. If they died and they have never believed, they will be open to condemnation. Hallelujah. They will rise to condemnation. And those that died in faith, they will rise to the resurrection of life eternal forever and ever. Therefore, God wants us to always carry eternal, uh, eternity conscience, to be conscious of our eternal life. He doesn't want us to be sucked into this world. He doesn't want us to be sucked into the problems of this world. Then forget the bigger picture of life. It doesn't matter what life throws you here. There is a resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a place, the Bible says, that day when we rise to our eternal glory, there will be no tears, no disappointment, nothing of anguish of soul the other side. It will be joy upon joy. Amen. Hallelujah. And we know that this life is not forever. I mean, for you even in this time to live until 100 years, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Death is so inevitable. Yet people are not thinking of their eternal destiny. Hallelujah. We must be transformed, not conformed to the standard of this world. If you look right now in the world, they will never preach to you eternal life. Hallelujah. But it's something that is so valuable, so important, that it determines where you are going to spend your eternity. Everyone knows that everyone, there is, the Bible says that every, it is appointed once for a man to die. That means that everyone will die. Hallelujah. Everyone is appointed for a man once to die. Then after that judgment, that's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Which means that in our conscience, if you look at the life of Jesus, you will notice that Jesus was very conscious of the Father. He walked pleasing God. Amen. There was a time that the parents were looking for him and he said, what is your problem? I am here to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. There was a time that the disciples went and they, they thought he was hungry and said, did you eat anything? And Jesus said, my will, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. That means any other thing on, in life, it was secondary to him, including food. Hallelujah. Amen. But today, today's Christian, talk about food. Food. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Food. Not food. It is so fast. It's taking every place in our lives. Yet our Lord, our very Lord, took food as secondary and he took the will of God as first. Hallelujah. So that means that any, everything that Jesus was doing, he wanted to please the Father. He was thinking about the crown that the Father has promised him. Hallelujah. You too, we are to think about the crown. The Bible says that we will be given crowns. Hallelujah. You to think about the crown you have in heaven. 
as you live in this world, let the world not drink you in. Let the world not conform, let, let you not be conformed into this world. But think about the crown of glory that you are going to be given by God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove Hallelujah. Now, if you see this scripture, it says, once you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, once your mind is renewed to that of God, amen, then you will be able to prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. You see, the people in the world don't know the will of God. Hallelujah. The people of the world don't know the, the ways of God. The Bible says that a carnal person cannot understand the things of God. I mean, only a spiritual person understands the mind and the heart of God. So once you begin to be transformed, you begin to know what is the will of God. You see, that's why I'm saying many, many Christians have forgotten the will of God. The will of God is in anything you are doing. 